Welcome to the ministry of Happy and Jeannie Caldwell. And now, here's Happy Caldwell. Jehovah Jireh means the Lord will provide. Today we're going to talk about faith, a substance more valuable than gold. You may be looking at a situation that you think you have absolutely no way to recover from, no provision, no finances, no way to do what God's called you to do. That isn't true, not according to the scriptures. God will provide, but He requires us to use our faith and put corresponding action with it. So get ready to receive today. Get ready to receive your provision on today's broadcast. Now, as always, we're going to start off the program with Jeannie's song. And uh, here's a powerful song. If you need healing, I have seen people healed as she sings these songs, especially this one. If you need healing, just get ready to receive. As Jeannie sings, He's a healing Jesus. Amen and amen. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord.
The doctors wanted to put three rods in my back to support my vertebrae column, but I chose not to have the surgery. I knew in my heart that God would supernaturally take care of me. Learning to Trust God's Faithfulness is a book about Jeannie Caldwell's real-life encounters with God. To order the book, Learning to Trust God's Faithfulness, call 800-264-2525 or visit our website at vtntv.com. And now, here's Pastor Caldwell with today's message. The word Jehovah Jireh means the Lord will provide. But I call your attention, he provided for himself. Did you know that you are his? He will provide for you. And when he provides for you, he's providing for his own. When we built VTN and, and the Lord told us what he wanted done, and we had all kinds of challenges, some spiritual, some financial. The Lord one day, because we had been impacted by uh, a great uh, attack of the enemy. And I went to the Lord and I said, Lord, I'm, I'm concerned here. And the Lord spoke to me and said, I did not raise this ministry up to see it fall. You just do what I tell you to do. I'm the one that's responsible for making this work. Did you get that? I didn't raise this ministry up to see it fall. That takes all the pressure off of me. I didn't raise this ministry up at all. Working in this ministry is not a job. It's a calling. Do you know the difference? <laughs> you don't? A calling is when God calls you to do a job. And it makes no difference what happens in that job. People, pressure, downturn, upturn, economy. It makes no difference what happens around you or inside or out or whatever. If it's a calling and God calls you, God's the only one that can uncall you. He's the only one that can change your calling. He's the only one that can redirect. He's the only one that hires and fires. But when God redirects, it's still a calling. He just calls you to do something else. Well, this was a calling. God had called Abraham. He had called him to prove and demonstrate his faith. And he did. And the Lord told me, he said, I didn't raise this ministry up to see it fall. And that took the pressure off me because I realized... He's, I didn't raise it up at all. He's the one that's responsible. Amen. Go to Hebrews 11, verse 17. Hebrews 11, verse 17. I want to encourage you, challenge you, bring to your remembrance that your faith is more valuable than gold to God. And I want you to reassess your faith because the world and the world system is not going to improve. It can't because it's built on a wrong foundation. It's not built on God. It's not built on the Word. But God never told us that the world and the world system would be saved. It's headed for a crash. It's headed for destruction. But we, the people of God, the church company, the body of Christ, is not headed for destruction. But regardless of what the economy does, regardless of what the world does, your faith 
is the determining factor. Your faith is more precious than gold. You don't have any gold, you have faith. And your faith will get you everything you need. Amen? Are y'all still with me? Hebrews eleven seventeen. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, proved, trusted, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. This thrilled God. It is what established Abraham as the father of our faith. Abraham became the father of our faith because he believed God and God imputed it unto him for righteousness. Go to Genesis 26. Genesis 26. Isaac learned from his father. Genesis 26, verses 1, 2, and 3. There was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. Now, Abraham went through a famine and Isaac went through a famine. That means there was lack, disaster, no food. Verse 2, And the Lord appeared to him and said, Don't go down into Egypt. Stay where you are and dwell in the land where I shall tell you. Sojourn in this land and I will be with you and bless you for unto you and unto your seed I will give all these countries and I will perform the oath which I swear unto your, uh, Abraham your father. Now it's real important for you to know where God put you. And it's real important for you to stay there until he tells you otherwise. Hello? You know, if, if you've been displaced, terminated, fired, maybe your country, your company's gone down, if you've been uh, whatever, it, it, not of your own choosing, <laughs> don't make the mistake of thinking, well, God must have wanted me to do something else. I got fired. No, that's not how God works. You don't wake up one morning and you got fired and, and, and it's God. It's like the lady that got in a car wreck, broke her leg, and wound up in the hospital, and she witnessed to the lady next to her and she got saved. And she told me, she said, oh, Pastor Caldwell, God had that wreck all set up so I could wind up in the hospital room next to this lady and pray for her to be saved. I said, ma'am, you could have walked in here on two good legs and prayed for this lady. <laughs> when I got saved and I was in the liquor business, I needed a new job. But I went to this preacher and I said, you know, if I get fired, because I wanted out of the job, but I didn't know what to do. I had a family. I, had, I needed income to take care of. I said, if I get fired, does that mean that God's moving me on? He said, no. He said, if you get fired, it means you did a lousy job. Or in today's economy, your company starts downsizing and you get fired. It doesn't mean you did a lousy job, it, but it doesn't necessarily mean that God's moving you on either just because you got fired. Well, that stopped me right there in my tracks. And I went to the Lord. I said, Lord, does that mean if I get fired that, you know, that's your way of moving me on? He said, no. I, he said, when I'm ready for you to move, I'll tell you. I said, you mean I got to stay in this business? He said, do you have any other way to support your family? No, sir. He said, I don't have any other uh, 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 evang uh, evangelists or preachers in the liquor business either. So you can just stay right where you are and you can witness to all your customers. Because you don't know enough about the word to preach. But all you know is you were lost and now you're saved. So all I want you to do is to tell everybody you call on. So I did. I stayed in that job for a year after I was saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. Can you believe that? 
I'm going to a Bible study every Friday night. I'm speaking in other tongues. I'm singing in the church choir. I love God. I'm worshiping God. I, I know that I'm called to the ministry and I'm selling booze. <laughs> what kind of deal is this? So real quick, I knew that God, God's reputation wasn't tainted because I was selling booze. Hello? <laughs> now, if I was drinking it, that'd be different. Well, I didn't want to sell it either, but I didn't want to get ahead of God. And sure enough, after about a year, I was down at the altar praying for a drunk. He wanted to be delivered. This was in a church service on Sunday night. I had my hands laid on him while I was praying for him. Man, the Spirit of God came all over me and spoke to me. You know, it's so funny. God is... <laughs> He interrupted me praying for a drunk to get saved and delivered. You would think that he'd wait till I got through. <laughs> but he's the one that's saving the drunk and the one that's delivering the drunk. And he said, now, Monday morning when you go back to work, which was the next morning, he said, I want you to give your boss two weeks notice. Whoo, Lord, I've been praying for a year for him to tell me what to do. And when he did, it scared me silly. <laughs> Lord, quit my job. You know, people think they have faith. They say, I'm going to quit my job and live by faith. But if you can't live by faith with thy job, you're not going to live by faith without thy job. <laughs> I thought... I thought I had faith. I've been studying for a year. I've been, yeah, just God. And then he said, now, tomorrow's the day. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> so he was sure. Well, that began our journey of faith. You know what I mean by that? That was the beginning of our life of faith. Now, Isaac was told by God to stay where he put him and to sow in that land. So he did. It was a famine. There was nobody producing anything. Famine usually constitutes no growing season, water, no water, dust. You know, there's nothing happening here. Uh, the corn market, the cattle market is all gone bust. There's nothing happening. People are leaving. Grapes of wrath. Here's Isaac. God says, I want you to stay right here and sow your seed. But God. Now don't but God. Just plant. Just sow. Just give. Just drive your stake in the ground. Become a missionary right here. Your faith is more valuable than gold. Now, let's read Romans 4, 17. And I'm not even halfway through with this. Romans chapter 4, verse 17. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Now this is Abraham. Abraham's the father of our faith. Now I want you to see this. I want you to just relax and enjoy this story. Abraham, who against hope, believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where there is no natural hope, there is no way for your situation to change? Then your faith is more valuable than gold. Let's say you have an incurable disease and all the money in the world cannot pay for the kind of medical treatment that you need to save your life. Then faith is more valuable than gold. Amen? So Abraham, who against hope, believed in hope. Verse 19, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was 100 years old, deadness of Sarah's womb. 
There are things that, that, that your, only your faith will fix. And then notice it said he was not weak in faith. Weak faith believes the circumstances over the promise. It says he was not weak in faith. Even though his body was too old and Sarah's body was too old, he still released his faith and believed God. Anybody in here believing for a car? If you're believing for an automobile and you don't have the money to buy it, your faith will get you that car. Your faith will get you an automobile. I know some of you are thinking, oh, Lord, Pastor, I'm still believing for a pair of socks. I mean, you know, well, that's where you start. That's where we started, believing for groceries. But your faith will get you something that you don't have the money for. Because your faith is more precious than gold to God. Keep reading. Verse 20, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith. Giving glory to God. Strong faith gives glory to God. Regardless of what it sees, hears, smells, or tastes, or doesn't taste. And being fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was able to perform. And therefore, everybody say, and therefore. And therefore, it was imputed unto him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone. Now this is where we, we've sometimes, we've quit right here. Well, that was Abraham. That was Jesus. That was Paul. That was, you know, Kenneth Copeland. That was, you know, but wait a minute. It says here, it was not written for his sake alone, verse 24, but for us also. That, that us, you're the us. It includes you. The Bible says that the trial of your faith is much more precious than gold. Why? Because faith is the only thing that pleases God. I hope these messages have been an inspiration to you and an encouragement to you to step out and use your faith. God is waiting for you to trust Him, to just stand on His Word. Amen. Now, I'd like to pray with you, those of you that are watching at home, maybe in a hospital room, maybe in a hotel, to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I believe Jesus is coming soon. I believe the rapture of the church is imminent, and I don't want you to miss it. So if you're watching right now, just stop what you're doing for a moment and pray with me. If you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart, just close your eyes and pray this prayer out loud. Just say, Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe God raised you from the dead. Come into my heart, Jesus. Save me now. Take away my sin nature. Give me your righteous nature. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer with me and you meant it, you said it out of your mouth, meant it in your heart, then I'd like you to have this little book that's on the screen right now. It's called God Loves You. It's my gift to you. It'll help you get started right in your life with the Lord. Easy to get. Just log on to vtntv.com. You can download it for free. Or you can call the number on the screen, 1-800-264-2525. Tell the operator you just prayed with Pastor Caldwell and you'd like that free book. We're here to pray for you, stand in agreement with you. So if you have a prayer request or a praise report, if you want to share it with me, email it to me. Happy Caldwell at vtntv.com. You can also call 1-800-264-2525 and send in your prayer request. Several months ago, I guess now, um, the Lord began to deal with me about the dispensation of the redeemed. The redeemed are a different category of believers. Um, the Bible calls us a new creation, new creatures in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. There's never been anybody like the redeemed. And the redeemed are going to rule and reign with Christ in the dispensation of the redeemed. To find out about the redeemed and who you are in Christ 
and the dispensation of the redeemed. Uh, watch this product offer, and I'm sure you'll want to get this and listen to it. Watch this. Get your CD of Happy Caldwell's latest teaching, The Dispensation of the Redeemed. As born-again Christians, we are the redeemed. According to Scripture, we are a new species of being that never existed before. Therefore, we are in a unique category of believers. If you think we're spending eternity in heaven, you're wrong. Those who are born-again believers will rule with Jesus on earth. If you want to know more about what happens after heaven, then you need to get Pastor Happy Caldwell's new teaching on the dispensation of the redeemed. It's just $5 plus shipping. To order your copy of this audio teaching, you may log on to vtntv.com or call 1-800-264-2525. Thank you for ordering the Dispensation of the Redeemed. Thank you for following us on Twitter. Thank you for tuning in the broadcast every Sunday. We appreciate hearing from you very much. You can follow me on Twitter, happy underscore Caldwell, and be sure to join Jeannie and me next week, same time. And remember, happy is the man that finds wisdom and the man that gets understanding. You can watch today's show online. Simply log on to vtntv.com and click Happy Caldwell. If you'd like to order today's broadcast on DVD, you may call 1-800-264-2525 and ask for the offer number on the screen. To contact this ministry, you may write to Happy Caldwell at P.O. Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221. You may also call us at 501-223-2525. And be sure to visit us online at vtntv.com.